Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TEW 2020 video. You join us for another edition of Lightning. We are just over a week away from AW All Out and the card is shaping up a lot of matches are getting announced tonight for the event that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. This is, in my opinion, our version of WrestleMania. As always, we're live on the AW Live Network for our Lightning broadcast. And we're going to be in New York, New York, chasing hopefully just under 17,000 fans. So without further ado, let's crack on with this week's edition of Lightning. And that's not a good start. The anticipated just shy of 17,000 crowd turns into just shy of 14,782 fans at the Robert K. Craft Field at the Lawrence A. Wine Stadium. Pre-show matches then, we had the Hardys take on Axel Dyer Jr. and David Finlay Jr. in our dark match. And it was a win for the Hardys. Matt Hardy, after the twist of fate Swanton Bomb combo, picks up the win in a 68 rated matchup. We had Brian Pullman Jr. defeat Frankie Kazarian in 10 with a Tornado DDT. This was a 65. We had Drew Gulak defeat Eli Dragunov in 10 3 with a Spine Splitter. That drew a 59. And we had Scorpio Sky pick up the win over Jack Evans in 839 with the blackout a 64. Could have been higher because I still haven't released Awesome Kong. So that's on me. We had Chad Betts defeat Ua Nation in 1026 with Grand Amplitude, 61. So you can see the guys and girls that are going to be on the kind of pre-show matches are kind of all at that same level. Which is not the worst, but they need a good bit before they get to the main event of the evening. Let's see how the main show does. So starting my show, CM Punk is in the ring. Just saying it's good to be to be back in a ring again. He's obviously been commentating for a long, long while. Cody Rhodes said Remember, man, you used to be the best in the world. Is that still true? Well, you said you were going to be having a kind of chew up match. We ain't giving you easy. You want to prove you're the best in the world. You want to prove you can hold the Cody Rhodes. We're going to give you the main event tonight against the AW Live Champion, Walter. So, never mind getting in match shape. Let's hope you make it by Walter to get to the event. And that was an 84. So just a little news note, I've done a little check there, return to the booking screen. Typically my main event was going to be booked by our, the road agent was Awesome Kong. So we had a quick switch of that. Lucky escape there. Back to the show. Ashley cuts a promo on Kairi Hojo. She obviously is ready for the upcoming AW Women's Championship match. And she says she's got a match up coming up here against the Karushida. Just take notes of uh, Hojo. Just take notes and see what's going to happen to your friend here. That promo drew a 74. Matchup drew a 73, so very happy with that one. And that's again with Shida at nowhere near peak overness. Ashley defeats Shida in 8.51 by pinfall. 73. 79 for Ashley, 49 for Shida. And I certainly feel these are two ladies that could bring an 80 80 matchup, no problem, down the line. We then had Mick Foley come out and he has confirmed that we will see a new championship belt within AEW. He says we are looking to crown our first ever ex-champion. I believe that's what I'm going to call the belt. Basically like an ex-division, but it's called the ex-belt. And um, we'll have some sort of matchup for that taking place at All Out. With people that you wouldn't maybe associate with championships, there'll be lesser down the card people that need a kind of breakout. He also says that Walter will defend that AEW Live Championship and we will have some sort of multi-man match for that. So we're going full on WrestleMania 2000 here. We're going to have plenty of multi-man matches to get everyone on the card. We had a matchup that had not a lot of heat and terrible wrestling with Chris Statlander defeating Mercedes Vernado in 12-23 by pinfall following a distraction from Bailey. At 55 here, this was because of Mercedes off her game and we had to keep her strong to put Chris over. I felt there was two ways I had to do this. As one, I'm trying to get Chris over, so a good scalp and beating Mercedes. 
at the same time we do need to keep a kind of reason for Bailey and Mercedes to still have a bit of hatred towards each other and that's just going to piss Mercedes off. And after the matchup, Bailey decides to just beat the crap out of Mercedes with a, a lather. Bit random, but I just feel like I want to gimmick their matchup. So a 58 there, and I, I just think these two would be really, really good in a gimmick sort of matchup. So looking forward to that later on. You'll have a bit more on that. And then Bailey just cuts a promo just saying. I'm here to make your life an absolute misery. I say, you've just been nothing but nasty to me. And as I say, you, you didn't take the defeat. The fight for the fallen. Then you will take your defeat once I beat you again. It all out. As a 44. It's because of what basically Mick Foley announcing the stipulation later on tonight. So I don't want to give too much away from Bailey. Promos are quite weak though, 44. I feel like her well, obviously this was way before our fantastic pandemic year, the stats in this, but yeah, just a bit poor from her. Then another good matchup, with Mysterio losing to Andrade in 12-29 with the Brilliante driver. 82, great chemistry and that showed in our performances. This was just a regular version of their matchup. Um, yeah, Andrade's down to 76 over, which is not exactly ideal for a guy challenging for your world title. But um, as I say, Bandido get the win. And he revenges that with a win over Mysterio this week. Backstage we've got an attack from Pentagon Jr. These two just cannot stay away from each other. They just want to keep throwing each other about, attacking each other, using all sorts of weapons. So that is a, a 78. Awesome Kong. Could have done better putting that angle together, but Penta came out of it looking excellent. And then he had a good matchup that saw Carol Anderson with a shock win over Matt Jackson in 10 06 with using the ropes for leverage. 77, just adding a bit more fuel to the fire so that the Young Bucks and the Good Brothers have a reason to go up against each other at all out. But 77, not too bad. Mick Foley then makes his announcement. It's not what you see as the text, it's him just basically announcing we will see Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. They will tangle at the pay-per-view but it's not going to be any sort of normal matchup we are going to see a version of a matchup that involves tables involves ladders and involves chairs so whatever AEW wants to call TLC since obviously Full Metal Mayhem was TNA's version so I don't know how they would quite work around that and he confirms that Bailey and Mercedes Vernado will go at it in a ladder match with the winner receiving a future women's championship match down the line. 73. We then had a terrible matchup that saw John Moxley and Thunder Rosa defeat Peter Avalon and Tay Conte in 917 when Thunder Rosa pinned Peter Avalon with a reverse DDT. Moxley carried the matchup. Thunder Rosa gets some overness over beating Peter Avalon. Uh, very shocked to see that Peter Avalon and Tay Conte had excellent chemistry together. The most random of tag teams put together and and it works here, so delighted with that. And after the matchup, Thunder Rosa just types a few words to Britt Baker. She says, look what's happened here to Ty Conte, look what's happened to Peter Avalon. That's going to happen to you, Britt Baker. And you better make sure that you get your own dentist. Because I'm going to take some of your teeth out as well. Strong words from Thunder Rosa. 60 promo, so progress in that front, which is good to see. Cody Rhodes comes down to do guest commentary for the main event, so we need this to do well, or I think it might be a pop loss. I think you can fairly see we are now fully making sure angles are telling stories rather than just all out for the best ratings. So Punk's down to watch, uh, sorry, Rhodes is down to watch Punk versus Walter. 80. Not bad. Good matchup, CM Punk defeats Walter in 2050 when Walter was disqualified when Cody Rhodes ran in and attacked Punk. I felt like that was the best way to do it, was basically have the DQ, keeps Walter looking like a tank, not being pinned or submitted. Punk gets a victory, gets 20 minutes under his belt. 8th segment, both guys with a 79 performance, Punk's overness is about that. Walter's just fairly under so it shows the level that Walter can get to. And uh, negative stamina for Punk, declining physical ability, but overall, pretty happy with that one. 
And of course, gives a bit of revenge, does Cody. Crossroads and Punk is in the middle of the ring, spaced out after the attack from Cody Rhodes. So 70 there. Show gets an 81, can increase your pop in 19 regions, so it'll be the lesser regions. But I feel like we've really progressed a lot of storylines there. Punk versus Cody. The Women's Championship, we've got the X Championship coming, we've got the stuff between Bailey and Mercedes, we've got Phoenix and Penta, we've got the Bucks against the Good Brothers, the Mixed Tag Team Championship match, a lot is happening there. And I'm really, really satisfied with that. We'll go to the main screen, see if much has happened in the process, and then I've got the fun of going to book the show in Japan. So, vast majority enjoyed the show. It was an NXT show, all for one, which saw Raul Mendoza defeat Kushida and Damien Priest in the main event for the NXT title. Raquel Gonzalez defeated Io Shirai for the women's. Rhea Ripley's still down there. Wow. Apart from that, not too much else has changed, and this will be the signings of Top Flight. So, of course, they'll go to the main roster, and Carol Anderson can get his 75 percent increase, that's fine, we're obviously I did put the bid in for Kushida along with that deal for Nakamura. Uh, NXT UK made an offer for, well that's fine because these deals are are written, so that's fine. Uh, Kushida we should still be favourites for him. You're the only one who seriously consider him, that's fine because we put it as a three year deal. 7.08 for AW Lightning. We're getting close to that 31 mil We'll probably just be short at the end of this month. I think we'll all be about 28 million once obviously pay per view revenue plus miscellaneous and tax is taken off us. But I feel we're going to be in a good position to get that rating up in the US very, very shortly. So that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. A wee thumbs up's appreciated. And I say any comments on this wrestling in general, your own saves, let me know. Get the conversation on the go in the comments section below. But cheers for watching. Take it easy. And I'll see you soon. Bye bye.